Here we are. And it's quite a remarkable journey that has brought us all to this place on this day. As the psalmist reminds us, happy are those whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. But before we get to some specifics about Anna, we need to pan out and get clear about what we are doing today and why it matters. Because Anna, this is bigger than you. We live in a moment in time that is divided in every way imaginable. By race, by class, by gender, by politics, by generation. In a great reversal of God's dream for us, we are divided by tribe and language and people and nation. Even creation itself has not been exempt from the consequences of division. Gee whiz, it's all over our hymns this morning. <laughs> Tumults, idols, thick darkness covering every nation, wars, envious hearts, blind-eyed, tongues confounded and numb mouths, jealousies, pride, lust of possessions, signs of endings all around us, fear, sadness. Pretty dark choices, Anna. <laughs> and yet you've always been one to name the hard things. Yes, the world is a mess. And never has the call to the church to be the church been clearer to be the people of the way, to follow our Lord into radical discipleship to which he calls us. Never has our call been clear to move out into every aspect of this world, reminding any and all whom we meet that they are beloved sons and daughters of God, heralding the good news of God's reconciling love and being midwives of reconciliation, being a people of relentless hope. So our coming together today is a fierce act of resistance to all that would throw us apart from one another and from creation itself. Today we declare that being a church committed to those at the margins Committed to the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. Committed to hearing and responding to the needs, concerns, and hope of the world. Committed to the creation who cradles us. Today we declare that this is our DNA as the body of Christ. And never has the world needed this witness more. As we gather today in the power of the Spirit to make Anna a deacon, we've got to remember where every call is sourced. Our primary vows are the vows of our baptism. It is these vows that order our lives, not just for Anna, but for all of us. The call to community as we continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. Remembering that our communion spans time and space. That sitting down together at the table matters. That going to the well of God's presence over and over again is what sustains us. The call to persevere against evil and a continual willingness to turn around and return to the Lord when we blow it. The call to proclaim in word and example, in our speech and in our practice the good news of God in Christ, that all bear the marks of divinity by virtue of being stamped with the image of God in our creation, and by virtue of the incarnation, and the good news that wholeness, salvation, is our inheritance. The call to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves, and understanding that, as I have heard Anna preach, our neighbor is an extension of our very own being. And the call to strive for justice and peace, respecting the dignity of every human being, and knowing that every really does mean 
every. These are the vows that shape our lives as followers of Jesus. These are the vows that have shaped Anna from the beginning within her family, within this community of St. Luke's, and within her Virginia Seminary community. We don't elevate Anna today in this ordination. We are not proclaiming that she is an extra special lay person upon which we now confer a higher status. There is no greater call than the call of baptism. If the church is going to be the church that Jesus has called us to be, we've got to get this theology right side up and understand this in our bones. So we aren't elevating Anna, but we all are calling her out. We are setting her aside. We are consecrating her because we need icons, living flesh and blood, holy icons. Today, Anna enters holy orders. In a quite literal way, her life is no longer her own. This life demands obedience, but not blindly. Discipline, but not as constraint. This life demands the capacity to listen deeply and see what is not apparent, but not with a sense of infallibility. This life demands a deep commitment to faithful practice, but not with perfection as the goal. Anna will icon for us that ordered lives are free lives, and lives lived in service are exquisitely full. Our gospel passage from Luke reminds us that the world strives for success, rising ever higher in power and privilege and status and position. Our trajectory is in the opposite direction. We draw our authority from our willingness to stand with the brokenhearted, the poor, the forgotten, the invisible, those on the edge, whatever that edge may be. And we serve as Jesus serves, never lording it over, but always among. Reminding these beloved children of God before us with specificity and particularity of their inherent dignity. If the bishop icons are called to unity, and the priest icons are called to bless and consecrate lives as sacred and holy, then the deacon icons are called to love, mercy, do justice, and walk humbly with our God. Anna will listen and look for the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. She will bring them before us and call us to attend to them. And she will do so from a place of solidity and strength. Anna, you are to remember the word of the Lord that was spoken to Jeremiah, because it's been spoken to you as well. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you and appointed you a prophet to the nations. Anna, you won't get out, get to opt out of speaking whatever God calls you to speak. And at times that will be costly. And you won't get to make an exception about whom God will send you to. The Lord has touched your mouth. Be obedient to the words God gives you to speak. The church needs to hear them. The world needs to hear them. We need to hear them. Anna, we're ordaining you at a time of tumultuous change in the world and in the church. The collect that the bishop prayed at the beginning really is true. Things which are being cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new. You bring a unique set of perspectives, gifts, and passions that will help us find our way forward your passion for the care of creation, your passion for racial reconciliation, 
your passion for social justice, your passion for the ethics around money, your passion for a life-giving understanding of human sexuality in all its aspects, your passion for community. All of these passions stand at the crossroads of all the conflicts in our world. And these are also the places where our world is yearning to be born anew. Anna, as a deacon, you will help us to plant ourselves at these crossroads, arms stretched out in a wide, wide embrace, calling us to remember that amidst all this chaos and loss and death, resurrection is afoot, reminding us that as we shed all that no longer serves us, we do so knowing that God is pulling us forward, reshaping us into new forms to hold this new wine. But it's not always easy to discern what is the new form, the new wine that is good from that which is merely trendy. We need leaders like you, grounded in prayer, attuned to the rhythms of ritual that is ancient, thoughtful, and reflective who understand that growth in our discipleship often takes place in the hidden places beyond what is measurable. I'm not going to lie to you, Anna. These are hard times to be in holy orders and to serve in pastoral ministry. Having to wrap words around the brokenness of the world week after week after week and trying to help a community of people stay grounded in the deep, deep place amidst a world full of noise and distraction, it takes its toll. You will have to drink deep from the well that sustains you. Do not sacrifice your time in prayer and contemplation. Tend to the needs of your body and respect its limits. Nurture your relationships with your family and friends and your need for companionship. Drink, drink deep of nature's goodness and bounty. Never forget that you are a mountain girl. <laughs> and these mountains and the glorious creation of which they are a part have the power to heal. Never forget that your call came on the road to Damascus. <laughs> Seriously, she was on her way to Damascus, Virginia. <laughs> and never forget that your sanctuary is creation. Remember that Jesus has called you. When you get discouraged, and you will, remember what Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you're worn out, it may be that you've forgotten that you are yoked to him, and there's a team of oxen pulling with you. You're not in this on your own. And never forget Paul's counsel in 2 Corinthians. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. This ministry is an act of mercy on God's part. Living life as an ordained person, this is how God grows some of us. For some of us, we are given this call to work, our, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's the path by which God brings us into greater wholeness. So this isn't about a job or even a particular shape of a vocation. This is about your life and your heart and your flesh and your mind and your soul and making all of these ever larger, ever more expansive. Do not lose heart. God's got you now, and God will have you all of your days. 
Honor, your heart is set on the pilgrim's way, and your joy will be found in your faithfulness to that path. Anna, keep us focused on what is possible. Keep us grounded in what is real. Show us who Jesus is when he takes on flesh in the nitty-gritty of our lives. Call us and we will follow, knowing that you will guide us in the way that is true and full of life. Weave us into the beloved community that we are meant to be. And as you do so, Never forget how beloved you are in God's sight and in ours.